And far too often, we can become blind victims of camera wars, resolution fanfaring, or be super slow motion zealots. Yet in doing so, aren't we forgetting why we started our filmmaking journey in the first place? We didn't start to become a collector of gear. And sure, we all love our gadgets and toys, but when was the last time your toy helped your business? When was the last time your gadget actually brought you closer to growing your craft? And so that brings us to the topic for today and what I call the perfect camera trap. The thing is, there is no such thing as a perfect camera and probably won't ever be, at least not in our lifetime, um, but that's okay because there is such a thing as the best camera for you. The camera that can get you what you need for the most part for your production needs as an owner operator, uh, someone who does a lot of one man band type projects uh, or works with a small crew where it'll save you money in the long term owning your own camera. Now I've been through my fair share of cameras like many of you and I think it's because we're always trying to chase the best image, the best dynamic range, the best slow motion and colors. There's nothing wrong with say, upgrading your camera every one to two years. Uh, I think you never know a camera until you give it the time and energy it deserves. No one can accurately and truthfully give a concrete review of anything without using it day after day for a good amount of time. First impressions and first thought type of content is great for perspective, um, but to really know what camera you need, you have to use it for a while to fully understand what it is you actually need. For me, the biggest thing I've been missing from my camera is really an ergonomically built camera that I can either build up or build down when needed. Built in indeed for those times when I'm out by myself, solid audio options, going into camera without having to add extra boxes, uh, solid high frame rate options, and internal 10 and 422 codecs. The Blackmagic Pocket 4K did most of that. Above all else though, the image quality was extremely good, so I was willing to deal with everything else. It has a mini XLR port, which is great, uh, but the preamps I was never a fan of. Uh, good enough for the most part, but I was still using a external recorder whenever I was filming interviews. Uh, the dynamic range is really good for such a small and affordable camera. The high frame rates are really good, as well as the ability for uh, built-in anamorphic. It's a really good camera if you're willing to either keep it small or use it on a gimbal or build it out the size of a proper camera. That's where I started to find frustration with the Pocket 4K and other similar cameras. Uh, the way I operate is mostly handheld off an easy rig with the use of tripods, sliders, and stabilizers, of course. But for handheld and with the lenses I have, the mount battery sizes, and everything else attached, I need the camera to also weigh a certain amount to balance things out. Ergonomically, I also need a camera that I can use handheld regardless if I have it fully built out or just bare bones with a lens, internal battery, and monitor attached. When you have small form factor cameras, you either have to um, build it out to use it properly for a handheld operation, or you need a solid EVF option um, to help stabilize the camera. With all that being said, is there a best camera uh, for me in this current moment that fits my requirements as well as the majority of the projects for my business? Well, I think I found that camera, the Sony FS7. I've used the FS7 and similar cameras before, renting them out uh, on projects when necessary, but never wanted to invest in the camera before as I didn't think I needed such a camera. However, going through so many different types of cameras, different sensor sizes, uh, different color science, form factors, I realized that over time, yes, I actually do need a camera such as the FS7 to fill the day-to-day -day operations and how I like to operate a camera. The FS7 offers everything I really need for my business and also for documentary projects which I'm involved in. It simply gets the job done at the end of the day through solid dynamic range, internal and 422, solid high frame rate options in 4K and full HD. With the use of a speed booster, I can get pretty damn near close to a full frame image as I own several full frame lenses. It has built in NDs, which isn't a deal breaker, um, but for those moments when you just need to get some ND in fast, it's great. And above all else, it's just a fast camera for me to use. I can build it up or keep it bare bones. And for me, that's probably one of the most important aspects of a camera that I needed to have. In the next few months, as we find ourselves getting back to work, back to doing what we love, I'll be sure to get more content out with the FS7, as well as a full review for the FS7. Will I have this camera for another year or two? 100%. Uh, well, I also have a new camera that fits my needs as a documentary filmmaker and commercial cinematographer. I'm not sure, and that's okay too.